you are looking at something called the morphing clock that was developed by Harry Fun a number of years ago. And over the years, people have enhanced the codes for weather and date. And I recently stumbled upon this on the Instructables website. I downloaded the code, followed Harry's instructions, and built this. And I decided to make my own feature enhancements to the project. I've added the day of the week to the bottom right corner. In the upper left, it'll flip between the wind and humidity every 10 seconds. I brought back the feature of morphing not only the minutes and the seconds, but now it'll morph the hours. There's an option for weather text, which is what it's doing right now. It's very easy to use. Building the clock is not too hard. There's a minimum of soldering that has to be done. The hard part is the Adreno board with all the compiling and collecting the libraries. I've made that easy by providing a zip file that's on Google Drive so you don't have to go out searching for all these libraries to make it compile correctly. I will also provide detailed instructions if you want to grab the libraries yourself. The video will cover all that. So if you're not familiar with Adreno, I think this video can make this doable so anybody can build this clock. In the video description, I will put links for the RGB display, for the ESP board, and for the power supply that you're going to need. The display is about seven and a half inches by four inches. It's a really fun project. I would like to see more people build this and what's going to happen in the next five seconds, it's going to morph to eight o'clock. So you'll see all the digits change. That's a really cool effect and that's what caught my eye to it. So if you're into building and you want something interesting to build, I I recommend this. It's a lot of fun and with the source code you can make your own changes. So these are the components you need to build this uh, morphing clock. The big component of course is the RGB matrix display. This is a 64 by 32 P3 style. I picked that up on AliExpress. The display came with this cable and this ribbon cable. You're also going to need some um, leads female to female on both ends. You need the Adreno board which is a ESP8266 Wi-Fi. It comes with two sets of connectors. One set has to be soldered onto the board. You need a 5 volt power supply they recommend at least two amps. I went with eight. I've had issues with some of the two amp supplies not really putting out two amps. And I have a feeling if you were to mod this display and possibly turn on more than the normal amount of pixels, it's going to draw over two amps. So you might want to consider getting a larger power supply than two amps. It came with a uh, power cord and it came with the wire adapter. So you don't need a lot of components for this to get this thing started. Um, a few wires we're going to have to do here and there's some simple soldering. And let's see how this goes together. Okay, so if we look at the controller board, on the bottom side of the controller are all these uh, pins. This is where we need to solder that connector to. We're not going to solder anything to these pins up here. Just these pins. Alright, the D0 all the way up. The connector is provided with most of these Adreno boards. And what we want to do though is solder it from the back side. So you're going to flip it over, put the shorter pins in this way, and solder it up this way. All right, that's the way they recommend it, so that's the way I'm going to follow the instructions. You're going to want to use a fine tip soldering iron. Um, they're fairly close together. It's not super hard soldering, but if you've never soldered before, this may not be the, the best way to get started. You might want to find a friend who can 
yeah, help you here. But this is the only solder part to this whole project, is just soldering this connector to the board. When you solder that edge connector down, I recommend finding a way to prop the board up so that it's fairly level, so that the connector is not going to be soldered at an angle on there. Okay, I used a small amount of tape to just hold the board down because of the, the post-it pad that I'm using to prop this board up on. It was acting a little springy on me. Because you want to make sure that edge connector is fairly uh, straight. And what I would do is just get both ends done first. Because once both ends are done and they're seated correctly, the other pins will not move on you. At this point, you can verify that the board is straight with the connector. And if it's not, that's the time to fix it before you solder up the rest of the pins. And also make sure it's flush with the board, that it's not sticking out. Okay, that's it for the soldering. The rest is just hooking up a bunch of wires, and then we have to do all the compiling to get the, the code working. This is the color code I'm going to be using to hook up some of these pins. We're going to be hooking up D0 to D4. We're going to skip the 3 volt. Then we have to hook up um, a couple of grounds and then D5 to D8. So this is going to be for D0 to D4 and then D5 through D8. Position the ESP board so the D0 is on your left side. And then using that color coding, do brown, red, orange, yellow, and green. That's your D0 to D4. Then you want to skip the 3 volt pin. Then you have a ground. Then you have D5 to D8, which is blue, purple, gray, and white. Then you skip the two pins, which is RX, TX, and then hook up another ground, and the three volt line is not used. Now, a couple things I had issues with that you might want to check out. Some of these pins, they have like an, an opening in them. You can see the little metal connector. In some cases, if you just pulled slightly on this plastic jacket, it would slide off. So get a screwdriver or something. And I know this is not perfectly in focus. You want to push that tab in because a few places I found the tab was not pushed in well enough and this would constantly slide off. In a couple of cases, I couldn't get the pin, I couldn't get the, the connector on the pin. It was too tight. So I had to take a resistor lead from a, you know, like standard resistor and push it into the pin to loosen it up. The, it was just, the spring in there was so tight, I was afraid I was going to snap one of the pins off on the connector. So if you've got a, con uh, a connector like that, just don't take a chance of breaking that pin off. Get a resistor lead and and push it in there a couple times to loosen it up. It gets a little too tight. And in a couple cases, I had some of these where they would fall off. They just had no spring tension at all. And uh, it, was, it was difficult to get them to stay on. Orient the board the way I show here with the T1 chip on the top and the T4 on the bottom. The left side of the board is considered the in connector. The right side of the board is considered the out connector. All of the wires from the ESP are going to the left connector, the in connector. Some of the wires from the in connector are then going to be jumped to the right side connector, which is considered the out connector. As far as mounting the board, I don't have an elegant way to do this. Um, there's some screws in this RGB display, these are three millimeter threads. So what I did was I took a three millimeter screw, 
I found a spacer in my junk box and I mounted it just with one screw. I think this is okay. I mean, it's only going to be held by one screw, but uh, for the moment, I don't have any other elegant way to mount this board to the display. So the next step, this cable comes with the RGB matrix display. It can power two boards. You only use one connector. It makes no difference which one you use. They're identical. The other end comes with some uh, lug nut type connections. This connector came with the 5 volt 8 amp supply that I bought. And it uses these screw terminals where you can put the wires in. And it's also labeled positive and minus. So I'm going to cut the um, these lug nuts off of the wire, strip it, and then just put it directly into that, that green uh, connector. So after you connect the red to the positive, the black to the negative, just to make sure nothing is stupid wrong here, put a voltmeter on those two screw tabs and make sure that the power supply and this connector are all correct with positive and negative. You never know where something, somebody could have wired this wrong and you end up having them reverse polarity. Hey, just a um, FYI, when I plug the USB cable into this connector, as you can see, it's moving around. I managed to bend it almost 90 degrees up on the board. I would have assumed that this was somehow better secured. It's not. So when you plug your USB cable in, depending on the, the brand of the board you have, this may not be glued down, and it's just being held by the, the four solder connections here for the USB port. I'm going to try to get a small dab of glue in there and secure that more, because otherwise I'm pretty sure I'm going to snap this off. I'm not even sure if it's not already broke. Okay, something to think about down the road when we start finishing this project up. We've got this cable, which is going to be supplied by a minimum of a 2 amp power supply. And I recommend you go with something more than 2 amps because there's quite a few LEDs on that thing. Uh, the ESP board is also going to need to be powered, and the power is not coming from these pins. So I dug up an old USB cord with the A connector on it. And the other side's got the micro USB connector on this side. I'm going to snip this off, this little piece. Just make it maybe uh, three or four inches long. And I'm going to piggyback that off the red and the black wires coming or going to the display board because it's you're providing five volts to the display board, which is what USB is. So I'm going to have a little jumper cable that's going to come off of this here and then this way it can power the ESP board. Alright, so this is what I ended up with. I decided I don't think we really need two pairs of each wire. So I just put some heat shrink on these pairs. I'm not going to cut them all the way back, but I'm pretty sure we don't need both. I made the cable just a few inches long for the USB. I decided to put a piece of heat shrink tubing on here to act as a strain relief so the wires inside the USB cable don't accidentally get pulled out because they're pretty thin. I made sure I twisted all the wires together before sticking them into this screw contacts. So this will now self-power the board so we don't need a separate USB power supply for the ESP. Okay, a quick test using the USB cable as a jumper to the 5 volt supply that powers the RGB display. It works fine. And I did not use all four wires. I just used two wires. I left these two on here. I'm going to probably cut them off. I put heat shrink tubing on the ends of them so there was no chance of it shorting anything. But you really don't need all for. They're all going to the same areas on the circuit. I think it's just because if there's another board plugged in, it probably would draw a lot of amps on this gauge wire. But since we're only driving one board, a single pair of these wires is just fine.
Okay, so to sum things up, uh, during the video you may have noticed that I'm using a different 8266 board. As I had noted during the video, the USB port did break off. It did, didn't take much. The glue didn't hold, and it snapped. I decided not to buy the same board because I was worried the next one would also not be properly fastened to the board. So I got a different one on Amazon, and that one is actually soldered correctly to the board, so it doesn't move at all. This was a very poor design to not fasten that down. So anyway, this one's done. Interesting part about the board I did buy on Amazon, you don't even have to solder the header on. The header is soldered on both sides on the board I got. So that would be a zero solder project then for some people if you don't like soldering. I've never seen one with the, the header actually soldered on. Usually you have to do, do that yourself. Um, only other things that I did that I did not document during the video didn't have an easy way to mount this connector. I didn't want this to be moving around. It would eventually stray the wires off. So I cut a piece of plywood out. This is called aircraft plywood. It's very thin. And I used another three millimeter screw. And then I just used a cable tie to hold this connector so that it doesn't wobble around. I don't have a 3D printer, so I can't uh, print a a nice case for this. I looked at some picture frames, but no picture frames seem to be the size of the screen, which is about seven and a half inches by four. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Right now, I guess I'm just going to prop it up on something and put it somewhere. I really enjoy it, and I didn't mention it a lot during the video, but the video camera does not pick up the true colors. This is a, a blue here. It's a cyan color. And the colors are a lot brighter and much better vivid, vivid looking than what the camera is showing. I tried playing with some of the camera settings. I just could not get a, a good effect because it also flutters quite a bit depending on the how much light is in the room. There is no flutter when you look at it with your own actual eyes. It's just the camera is picking up that frame rate because the LEDs are not on constantly. They do shut on and off, but they shut on and off so quickly the eyeball doesn't see it, but the camera does. Uh, other than that, if there's any issues with some of the changes, I may just leave comments in the YouTube section and I'll try to fix any bugs that I may have caused or if there's something else people want to see, maybe I can enhance the code. But this was a fun project. I'm, I'm glad I did it. I actually learned a lot about C++, learned a little bit more about Adreno. And um, I really want to thank Harry for creating this. This was a, a cool idea that he came up with. Okay, so now that you've completed the hardware, the next step is going to be compiling the code, installing the IDE, gathering libraries, it's all the software side of the clock. I have made that a separate video. The link for the video is in the YouTube description.